Hello friends, welcome back to Dental Info. The topic for today is Functional Matrix Theory which was proposed by Melvin Moss. This is one of the most important theories of growth. So let's get started. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to receive a notification when we release a new video. As mentioned in the previous video, the various theories of growth are First was the genetic theory given by Brody The sutural theory given by Winman and Sitcher then the cartilaginous theory which was given by James Scott and the most important theory which is the functional matrix theory which we will be discussing today in this video. The functional matrix concept of Melvin Moss revitalized the studies of growth and development at the time when the sutural growth theory of Seeger and the cartilaginous growth theory of Scott were severely criticized for their inadequacy. Moss introduced the doctrine of functional matrix complementary to the original concept of functional cranial component by van der Klaus. The functional matrix hypothesis claims that the origin, form, position, growth and maintenance of all skeletal tissues and organs are always secondary, compensatory and necessary responses to chronologically and morphologically prior events or processes that occur in specifically related non-skeletal tissues, organs or functioning spaces. So, according to the functional matrix theory, the form, function, position, growth and maintenance of the skeletal tissues are affected by the non-skeletal tissues. The events occurring in the non-skeletal tissues are responsible for the change in skeletal tissues. So, tissues such as muscles, nerves, glands, blood vessels, fat, teeth, functional spaces, were responsible for a change in the skeletal tissues. So what this theory explained was that the non-skeletal tissues had a direct influence on the skeletal tissues. A number of relatively independent functions are carried out in the craniofacial region of the human body. Some of the functions carried out include respiration, olfaction, vision, hearing, balance, chewing, digestion, swallowing, speech, and neutral integration. Each of these functions is carried out by a functional cranial component. Each functional cranial component consists of all the tissues, organs, spaces and skeletal parts necessary to carry out a given function. The functional cranial component is divided into the functional matrix, and the skeletal unit. The functional matrix is divided into two. First is the periosteal matrix.
The periosteal matrices include the various muscles, blood vessels, nerves, glands, etc. And second is capsular matrix. The capsular matrices are of two types. First is the neurocranial capsule which includes skin and dura matter. And the orofacial capsule which includes skin and mucosa. The skeletal unit can also be divided into two parts. First is the macroskeletal unit. For example, the mandible. And second is the microskeletal unit. For example, in the case of the mandible, the microskeletal units are alveolar, angular, condylar, gonial, mental, coronoid, and basal microskeletal units. Another example of microskeletal unit is maxilla. The microskeletal units in case of maxilla include orbital, pneumatic, palatal and basal microskeletal units. Now let's find out the relationship between these components. As discussed earlier, the periosteal matrices which include muscles, blood vessels, nerves, glands, etc. act directly and actively on the related skeletal units thereby bringing about a transformation in their size and shape. This transformation due to the action of periosteal matrices is brought about by bone deposition and resorption. The capsular matrices which include skin, mucosa, dura matter act indirectly and passively on their related skeletal units producing a secondary compensatory translation in space. These alterations in spatial position of skeletal units are brought about by the expansion of capsule within which the bones arise, grow and are maintained. This kind of translative growth is not brought about by deposition and resorption. Now let's see how the periosteal matrix is related to the skeletal units. A direct and active influence of the periosteal matrix is seen on the skeletal unit. It is very important to remember this point. When the influence of the capsular matrix on the skeletal tissues was studied, An indirect and passive influence of the capsular matrix on the skeletal tissues was seen. Remembering this point is also important. 
Now let's summarize what we have learned in the functional matrix concept. The functional matrix concept states that there are a number of changes occurring in the origin, form, position and growth of the skeletal tissues and organs. These skeletal tissues may include maxilla, mandible or other skeletal tissues. In contrast to the previous studies which proposed the influence of sutures and cartilages on the skeletal tissues, Melvin Moss proposed that the specifically related non-skeletal tissues, organs or functioning spaces were responsible for the events and processes occurring in the skeletal tissues. These non-skeletal tissues in the form of periosteal matrices like muscles, blood vessels, nerves and glands and capsular matrices like the dura mater skin and mucosa influence the related skeletal tissues. Now let's revise what we have learned till now about theories of growth by solving some multiple choice questions. Question 1. Oral and nasal capsule of functional growth is related to Option A. Periosteal matrix Option B. Sutural matrix Option C. Capsular matrix Option D. None of the above Question 2. Functional matrix theory suggests that the determinant growth of skeletal tissues resides in Option A. Skeletal tissues Option B. Suture Option C. Cartilage Option D. Non-skeletal tissues Question 3. All of the following are considered microskeletal units of the mandible as per the functional matrix theory except Option A. Chin Option B. Glenoid fossa Option C. Coronoid process Option D. Angle of the mandible Take your time to answer these questions. You can later verify your answers by checking the description section below. Please like, comment and subscribe to this channel to learn about various dental topics. You can also ask us any other questions or give suggestions in the comment section below.